Good morning and welcome to another ACY Securities Market Review. Today I'm going to be covering a few different topics, but I want to go through some of our charts to begin with and then we'll move on to those and then do the news ahead as well. Now, the first chart that I have up at the moment is actually the S&P 500. Now, I'm sure many of you are aware if you have either been trading in the last week or you've watched some of my videos, you'd see how much impact we're really getting from the coronavirus and how much the stocks are starting to slide across the board. The S&P 500 sort of sums it up perfectly for us. We can see the big drop that we've had throughout the week and that it has devalued quite a fair, a fair amount. So what are we looking at for the week ahead when it comes to the S&P 500? To be totally honest, the indicators for it are not fruitful. They're not gonna be any sort of good things coming out in the week ahead, especially when it's related to coronavirus. We've already been told that we're not getting much updates in terms of uh, making vaccines and or cures for the disease or illness. And so that is probably gonna to lead to seeing more bad data coming out this week, specifically related to manufacturing out of China. The Australian dollar here on the chart that I've got behind me has also been sliding down, though this is not unexpected. We have seen the Australian dollar in a long-term downtrend for quite some time. It has sped up its pace a little bit over the week, but it is still trading in that 60 cent range between 60 and 70, hovering right now just under 65 cents. For the dollar yen, if you, now, if you had have been on the charts with me on this last week at our webinars on Tuesdays or Thursdays, I did mark out some of these patterns for us that I've got on the chart now, which are head and shoulders patterns, and you may have been able to use them as a continuation to continue trading down. We do still have one of these major support lines much further down, so it is a way away yet. Uh, I don't have much prediction for what is gonna happen with the dollar yen other than seeing it move further down. We're really waiting on getting more fundamental data to come in so we can see how much manufacturing is going around the world. But naturally over the weekend just gone, we've had quite a bit of unexpected sort of news coming out of coronavirus, which has seen markets move down already first thing in the morning today. Now, gold. Gold has been an interesting chart for us as well today. We've seen price move up over the last week with people moving their money into safe havens. And now we're getting a bit of a change in that. We've seen price move down on the lasting days of Friday and over the weekend with pr price now hovering back in this range that I drew there a couple of weeks ago before we really saw the implementation of coronavirus being a problem. So keep an eye on that. We're now in this barrier again, so we'll extend these lines a little bit further and let's see if we can resume this range again and start trading in price levels along the way. For the euro dollar and what has gone on for the biggest news of the week, I thought I'd just mark out to give you an idea of what we're seeing news move on. Now, naturally, on we've had G20 leaders and uh, speaking about the coronavirus and keeping an eye on it, so that sort of moved price around a bit. We had South Korea with a number of outbreaks occurring, and in this instance, this was the first time that we actually saw that South Korea had really had a big sort of expansion on what has really, you know, on how much that disease is traveling. Now, then we also had Italy starting to give us a bit of an update about their own outbreak. And so, as you can see throughout the week, that has changed. Now, whilst the euro dollar is going up, we are seeing that, you know, we are finding markets having turbulent times across the board. So, it is interesting to see that we're seeing this market move up versus another that's not. Now, we then had CB, US consumer confidence stuff come out. Now, the issue that I'm finding with some of these um, announcements and the news and the updates on the data that we're getting is that it's old data. Now, whilst it is old data, it's a lagging indicator and all that, and you might say, well, Alistair, that's, that's not new news. However, because of the relevant information when it comes out with coronavirus and the impacts that we're seeing from it, all of this data is kind of almost entirely obsolete. It's not really giving us a good indicator of what's going on outside of that boundary of the last month. So keep an eye out on that sort of thing. Uh, we are seeing that stuff is you know, coming out with good figures, but we know the reality is a little bit off from that at the moment. So I don't wanna be doom and gloomy, but definitely keep an eye on that sort of stuff. Now moving on, a little bit of a virus update for you. Uh, there's been 88,000 cases globally at the moment, 3,000 deaths. We've got virus hotspots in China, Italy, South Korea, Iran, and more spreading up over the weekend. Uh, we've seen deaths in places like Australia and New Zealand starting to come into factors, and we've got a number of other places where we're getting you know, one or two occasioning deaths. 
However, you know, we've moved into a high risk environment from the WHO and we've got travel restrictions being issued around the globe. Now, in addition to that, Japan and the US have stated that they are saying do not travel to certain places now. So it is amping up to the next sort of level, if you will. Now, moving on to the news that we have ahead of the week, I will cover some of the stuff that we are, that I expect will be a high impact event. It is NFP week, so please don't forget about that. So moving on to some of the news that we have ahead of the week, uh, we have some manufacturing PMI data coming out today from China. However, we also got some data coming out on Friday. Now on Friday last week, there was uh, purchasing managers index information that came out and the previous was 50, right? Now it has moved down to, thir um, to 35, which is a massive contraction and is actually more than what we saw during the 2008 GFC. So in 2008, that same PMI data and the, the, the percentage level that they had for it was at 38, and now we've had a 15 mark drop. So that is just indicating how far we're gonna start seeing some moves occurring, especially around that ch Chinese manufacturing. And I expect to sort of start seeing the data being affected throughout the week. So keep an eye specifically on those sort of purchasing managers index um, announcements. They will impact on price a fair amount. And I believe that we're actually really going to start seeing that recorded data for China. So in today ahead, we have manufacturing PMI coming at 12.45 for China. Uh, for Tuesday, 2 a.m., we have U.S. manufacturing PMI data. Now, that's going to be interesting to have a look at. It comes out at about 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning. But certainly with all the interest of PMI from China, it will be interesting to see what happens on the U.S. side of that. Now we then have at 11.30 a.m. building approvals for Australia. There will also be a cash rate um, announcement and possibly an RBA rate statement at about 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, we have 11.30 a.m. Uh, Australian GDP figures. So I don't, it's, only, it's the quarterly ones. I don't believe we're really gonna see much impact on what's gone on in the last month in that because obviously it will be a lagging style of indicator for us but probably a good idea to keep an eye on it anyway. It's what I would consider a high impact event. Now on Thursday, 12.15 in the morning, we have the ADP non-farm payroll estimates coming out. So be wary of that. Usually we start to see that report come out and then price uh, is you know, what the, the event is actually priced into the news ahead of the official NFP announcement on Friday. So keep an eye, let's see what goes on. It could be exciting, especially with the changes that we've been seeing in the past month. Uh, on at 2 a.m. shortly after, we then have rate adjustments coming out of Canada, uh, which may or may not happen. Uh, 11.30 in the morning, again, always 11.30 are Australian news events that occur. We have trade balance figures for Australia coming out at that time. And then all day Thursday are OPEC meetings. So be aware and be prepared for unexpected speeches and announcements that could be coming out of those meetings. Usually, if, especially if you're going to be trading oil related um, commodities uh, and of course any currencies that are sort of a oil manufacturing uh, business or empire. Now on Friday, we have Bank of England Governor Carney speaking, and at 4.45 a.m. we then have the Bank of Canada's Governor Polos speaking. So both of them are gonna be addressing potentials of coronavirus, I would anticipate, and what they're gonna be doing with the manufacturing side of things and where rates might end up going. Now it is word of wise or caution that last week on Friday, in addition to the Chinese manufacturing data, we also saw the Fed, Fed Chair Jerome Powell indicate that if need be, rates would be cut to try and boost that spending, especially amongst all the global factors that are really going on right now. It is interesting to see that he has moved, it feels like they're moving their timeline up compared to the meeting that we had not too long ago from the FOMC. Now, 11.30 a.m., we have Australian retail news on Friday, so keep an eye on that. Those retail figures are important, especially for the Australian domestic economy at the moment. Uh, Saturday morning, now, 12.30, this is the big one you're all gonna be wanting to watch and keep an eye on, although it will likely be priced in. We do have Canadian employment figures coming out of that time, as well as trade balance figures out of Canada, 
but the big one's going to be the NFP on that day. So if you are going to be trading around Saturday, keep an eye on what goes on with the ADP that comes out earlier in the week and gives us those estimates for the NFP. But I likely, in the past, it has almost always been priced in ahead of time. But you know, you never know. So keep an eye on it. Anyway. That's really all we have for today for you. Um, keep an eye on what's going on throughout the week. Obviously these coronavirus impacts are large and they are being at random times of the day. So it is quite difficult to know when the next piece of news is gonna come out for them. We are finding as well that a lot of the news that you would usually expect that is scheduled is being muted because of it. So keep an eye on what's going on from that front and keep up to date with it all. It really is imperative at this point in time. Now, if you have any questions on the content I've covered today, maybe some, it might be something related to the coronavirus or what my opinions are or anything along those lines, feel free to send me a message at talktoal at acy.com. And of course, like and subscribe the video so you can get more updates from us in the future and some of our other great content that we have. Have a good trading week ahead.